The next talk is by Dr. Osvaldo Simeone on cloud processing for 5G systems. Okay, so thank you. Um, so my uh, presentation concerns uh, cloud processing for 5G systems, and specifically uh, cloud processing for, the wi for wireless access in 5G systems. Uh, this is a technology known as cloud radio access network, cloud run. And so this, uh, the, the work I'm going to talk about was joined with uh, InterDigital, and particularly with Onur Shahin, um, and also with uh, Shlomo Shamai from Technion. Okay, so given the theme of uh, today's uh, research day, uh, one thing on which there seems to be a consensus on uh, concerning 5G systems is that they will integrate a number of different wireless technologies, uh, including microwave, conventional microwave, but also higher frequency millimeter wave communication, uh, small cells, uh, now taken to the extreme as ultra densification, device to device communication, that is communication between mobile terminals, or even machine-to-machine -machine communication. Jörg mentioned that uh, before. And they will have to serve a number of different use cases. And again, Jörg mentioned some of them, but you know, let me say ranging from uh, remote surgery to uh, conventional data communication to maybe event uh, or alarm uh, detection. So all these requirements and uh, the integration of all these technologies can only be possible if one implements a flexible and intelligent wireless access uh, network, that is radio access network. And one of the most promising technologies to do so is by means of cloud computing, that is implementing the run radio access network using cloud computing, uh, so cloud processing. And the corresponding technology is known as cloud run, or CRAN, and this is the subject of uh, this presentation. So specifically, I'll try to provide some additional motivation for CRAN. I'll uh, talk about the challenges that arise, opportunities and challenges, and then I'll zoom in on a specific uh, technical contribution. I'll try to explain specific technical contribution we made in the context of that project. Okay, so to start, to introduce the idea of uh, Cloud Run, consider the increasingly common scenario of a heterogeneous, dense cellular system where we have cells of different sizes, conventional macro, but also pico, femto cells served by base stations of corresponding different sizes, macro base station, pico base stations, femto base stations. Now, in a conventional cellular implementation, all these base stations will implement the full protocol stack that is necessary, typically physical layer, MAC layer, and uh, some layers above that. So, and this means, say for the downlink, that is for communication from the network to the mobiles, that in a conventional cellular system, each base station, a base station in that figure is a tower, right, one of those towers, each base station performs all the necessary processing to produce the radio signals that it needs to transmit to the mobiles. Okay, this is a conventional cellular system in which processing is local. Now CRAN turns this paradigm in a sense upside down in the specific sense that in a CRAN, the processing is not done at each one of these towers, but it's done at base station, but it's done at a central processor, central unit CU, that can be implemented in a cloud of processors remotely in the network of the operator. So specifically, the way this will work is that, so this is an example of so-called virtualization techniques. The way this will work is that this cloud unit here will now do all the processing necessary for all the base stations that are connected to it, down to producing the radio signals that these base stations are supposed to transmit. And now these radio signals will be, or some versions thereof, will be transmitted on some high capacity, hopefully links, to each one of these base stations, and now all that the base station needs to do is to send out this radio signal. So base stations really don't have to do anything except working as radios, transmit out radio signals that somebody else has produced for them. So they are known for this reason as radio units or remote radio heads. Here you see RU in this uh, illustration. 
Now, the uh, radio signals that I talked about that have to go from the cloud to the base stations or the radio units go through some links which are known as front hall links in, co in contrast to back hall links which connect the cloud to the core network of the operator. And this can happen in two different ways. Either the radio signals are sent in analog format, so just in maybe intermediate frequency, they're sent over these links, and this is what happens in so-called radio over fiber. Or they can be digitized at the baseband level. So they are converted to baseband and digitized, made into bits, and sent in a digital format on these links. And this is done using a standard currently known as CPRI. CPRI. So here, I'll focus on the more common second case of digital transmission. OK, and now, based on all this, I think it should be clear what the advantages of this architecture are. And this is why uh, many operators are looking into them. First of all, they allow for a dense deployment of base stations without the cost of deploying full-fledged base stations, so which involves, for instance, cooling and all of that. Because now we can, only, we can just implement and deploy low-cost radio units, which only implement radio functionality. Another advantage is that uh, because of the centralization that you talked about, they allow for the flexibility and intelligence, you know, centralized flexibility and intelligence to be implemented. This is one of the original motivation that I mentioned earlier. Then again, because of the centralized operation at the baseband le le level, they can allow for, baseband, for interference management across all connected base stations, or all, across all connected radio units. And finally, again, because everything is centralized, then the system is much easier to upgrade and maintain. One doesn't have to change the base stations, but just need to change the software that is running the cloud. However, all this comes with a significant challenge, and the challenge, uh, maybe clear from the description, is that we need to find effective ways to send these radio signals on the, the baseband digital, digit, digitized signals in the digital implementation from the cloud to the base stations. Right? This is what the whole architecture relies on. So this is a challenge, and this can be seen by considering a, you know, doing some back-of-the-envelope calculation based on the, the CIPRI standard that I talked about. Uh, so for instance, you can see that if you have an LTE base station with a number of antennas which uses carrier aggregation, meaning uh, serves multiple carriers at the same time, the bit rate that you'll have to um, serve to this base station is so high in the excess of 10 gigabits per second that it cannot even be accommodated on standard fiber optic cables. The problem is compounded by the fact that, in practice, not all base stations or radio units will be served by fiber optic cable links. The reason is that installing fiber optic links is very expensive, as you hear also in the news, and also leasing them, if you don't have them, is expensive. So operators are looking into using wireless, for instance, millimeter wave uh, links for front holes. And so this, all of this creates a, uh, the problem that these links have finite capacity, and therefore you can't send everything you want at the rate you want on these frontal links. And again, this becomes a bottleneck in the implementation of the principle of CIRAN. Okay, so this leads me to the, uh, the objective of the project that I talked about. You can find a summary of that project in this magazine paper, some advertising uh, my research group here. And here I'd like to zoom in on a specific contribution we made in the context of this project. It's a bit technical, but I'll try to explain it nevertheless in simple terms. So the uh, contribution has to do with the downlink. So here we have our cloud unit, central unit, which takes as input all the data streams that it wishes to communicate to the mobiles. And again, this cloud unit, CU, will do all the necessary processing and then communicate to each one of these radio units over finite capacity front hole links. Again, we can't communicate at any rate, but we are limited by the capacity of the front hole links we have. Maybe wireless, maybe wired. And then the radio units, all that they do is they send out on the wireless interface whatever the cloud unit tells them to send out. Right, they're just radio units. So the conventional way in which you would implement this system is shown in this chart. Uh, the block diagram, so here is the central unit in this dashed block. These are the data streams for all the users. What the cloud would do, first it would apply some channel coding, and we have heard about that from York, so one of those wonderful codes that uh, we talked about. This is in order to fight noise and uh, fading effects. Then a, an operation called pre-coding will be applied. This is done in order to manage interference among all these data streams. And after that, and this is the key point, the cloud now has one signal for each base station, one baseband radio signal for each base station. 
Unfortunately, these signals cannot be delivered to each base station or radio unit directly because we have capacity limitations. So what we do in the conventional implementation, we perform quantization and compression in order to make sure that the capacity of each one of these frontal links is not exceeded. And the point here is that this quantization is done separately for each frontal link. So despite the fact that in CRANs we have the ability to jointly process all these signals, nevertheless in the conventional implementation it seems natural to just quantize each one of these signals separately for each base station, right? reducing the rate for each base station for each radio unit. Now to see why this approach is suboptimal, uh, we need to rely, we need to take a network view of the problem inspired by network information theory and network information theory is in fact what um, it's the framework that uh, informed the whole project. The idea was to see what optimal techniques are in the context of CRAN uh, by using the solid theoretical framework of network information theory. So in this case, what, if you take a network information theoretic viewpoint, you'll see the following. I'll try to illustrate it with a simple picture. Again, this is a bit technical, but it, uh, it assumes that you know what quantization means, but hopefully it will be clear for, for a lot of people. Uh, so say you have two base stations and you have to quantize two signals, uh, one for base station one and one for base station two, X1 and X2. In the conventional implementation, you will apply a separate quantizer for each one of these two signals. So we have the signal for base station one. I'll quantize it by uh, defining these quantization regions and corresponding quantization levels. Okay, so I hope the nomenclature is clear enough. And we do the same separately for these two axes. There is no, this is done separately for the two base stations. So let's see what this means in terms of performance. Let's say that the uh, cloud would like the two base station to send the red signal, so X1 and X2. Now it has to perform quantization first, right? Because we can't communicate at infinite rate to the base stations or to radio units, and therefore we quantize. So the signal that actually gets sent is this black dot. It's not the red uh, square. And therefore, this red line here is quantization noise. This is interference. This is a disturbance that is going to affect the performance of the, uh, the receivers or the receivers. And the key point here is that because of the way propagation takes place, channel propagation, uh, wireless propagation takes place, the receiver may be more sensitive to noise in some directions rather than in others, directions in space rather than in others. So for instance, if you if you're familiar with wireless communications, if the channel points in this particular direction, say minus 45 degrees, that means that noise in the orthogonal direction will be irrelevant for the performance of the system, will not affect the receiver. But however, if you use separate quantization like this, there is no way to shape these quantization regions so that the quantization noise affects a certain spatial dimension less or more than another. Right? There is no way to control it. So the whole idea here was to use ideas that are used in uh, other fields, for instance, in uh, quantization, uh, for instance, transform coding, to shape the, these quantization regions so that they affect the uh, desired uh, spatial direction less than the undesired directions. Okay. And uh, so the architecture-wise, what uh, we're suggesting is that rather than having a separate quantizer for each frontal link, you should have following the principle of CRAN, a joint quantizer right, that operates across all front hole links. And to see what the effect of that is in a simple example, here let's take again this previous example. Let's fix the same quantization levels on the two axes so that the radio units don't have to be informed about any change in the strategy. All that we change is the way the cloud performs quantization. And I can, for instance, decide to use this quantization regions so for instance, all the points associated to this point are in this region here. And if you have some familiarity with quantization, this will tell you that uh, in this direction, for instance, minus 45 degree, degrees, the quantization noise is much less uh, uh, detrimental than in the orthogonal direction, right? Because these regions are smaller in this direction than in the other. So by just changing the way quantization is done in the cloud, we can make sure that the receiver will see less, will be impacted less, by quantization noise than otherwise. And it, when you formulate this problem mathematically, you can in fact jointly design the pre-coding which tells you where the signal goes and the quantization which tells you where the quantization noise goes in space. Right? And this is naturally to be done jointly. And let me show you some numerical results to see what the impact of this fairly simple change in the system might be. 
So here we took the uh, performance of this cell. We have three macro base stations, and we have a number of pico base stations, which are randomly placed. They're all connected to a cloud unit. And the, what we want to compare is two implementations. One is the conventional one. We use separate quantizers, state-of-the-art quantizers and compressors. And the other one, we use joint quantization, what I briefly explained here. We use the standard settings for LTE, so everything is standard. Uh, we wanted to see how this would work in a real deployment. And here is one illustrative example. On the y-axis, I have the rate of the cell edge users. These are the worst users, the ones that are the furthest from the cell center. On the x-axis, instead, I have the average spectral efficiency. So this is a figure of merit that tells you the following. If I want to increase the average rate that, this, that, I, that I offer in the cell, then I'll need, to make, I'll need to serve only the best users, the ones that are closer to the towers, and not the ones that are further. And so, as you can see, as I try to make the average better off, I'll make the cell edge users worse off. So these curves are going down, right? There is a trade-off between the average and the worst. Okay, so again, this tells, this tells the operator that depending on what kind of level of average spectral efficiency they want to obtain, uh, they'll have to leave with worse the cell edge users having that kind of quality of experience, right? The vertical, uh, the horizontal, uh, vertical axis. And here I have two curves. One is uh, what we get if we use the conventional implementation, and one if we just change the way quantization is done, nothing else, right? And what you can see is that by in, in just in one cell, and what you see is that in the very simple example, you gain, for instance here, a factor of two on the cell edge throughput, again, by just changing the way quantization is done, nothing else, right? So, of course, this doesn't provide the 10 or 100 per gains that other technologies can offer, but it's an, you know, something you can add on top of other solutions to get gains of this sort, right? A factor of two, for instance. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, so I'll try, I tried to uh, all describe uh, challenges and opportunities of the CRAN architecture, which again implements the radio access or the wireless access part of an, L of an LTE or a 5G system using cloud computing. So not at the base stations, but using cloud uh, computing technology in a cloud center remote from the base stations. We zoomed in on a specific challenge that is that of going from the cloud to the radio units, to the base stations. One needs to provide front holding for that. And we saw that this is a significant challenge, uh, particularly if one uses the most common digital implementation of CRAN. And then I advocated for the use of network information theory to provide guidelines on what to do, on what to implement in order to address these challenges of finite capacity front hold links. And I provided an example for the downlink if, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can read the magazine paper that I uh, alluded to before, and there you find additional uh, applications of this principle, of again, network information theoretic principle to the design of CIRAN, and this is very much a uh, ongoing research. That's it, thank you. <laughs>